Okay, friends, here we are. Uh, we are looking at another um, uh, instance, uh, the, another facet of the gospel's wondrous richness. And this week, we're looking at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21, and I've entitled this, Proclaiming the Message of Reconciliation. Reconciliation is a major, major idea now in our societies around the world. There have been so many societies that have been alienated and hurting where people are fractured. Uh, and alienation is, is envisioned in a number of different ways. You know, uh, relationally, it's like when you have a broken heart, uh, the, the relationship has gone sour. We talk about a relationship as a ripening effect. It's fresh relationship. It's a sick relationship. Uh, uh, one of my favorite uh, images of it is the idea of a, of a road being out, mm -hmm. of a bridge being out. Uh, you want to get to the other side, and there's no way to get to the other side. The, the, the way you normally relate to get through is not possible. If you think of a lot of the gospel evangelistic sort of uh, discussions about Jesus is the bridge for us, that whole idea that 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 what we could not, the crevasse that we could not go beyond, he was able to go beyond for us. I love the way this Bodhi seminary professor, Jesus drained the cup of God's wrath bone dry leaving not a drop for us to drink. That idea that everything that we owed God, that made God mad, legitimately angry at what we were and what we've done, he took it all on himself. And this word of forgive, it's an amazing term uh, in, in society. Forgiveness, to actually let go. Uh, it's always who's going to make the first move. You know, that's a big thing in reconciliation. Uh, when you think about it, God always makes the first move. God did not wait for a change of heart on our part, Jerry Bridges says in his book on the gospel. He made the first move. Indeed, he did more than that. He did all that was necessary to secure our reconciliation, including our change of heart. Even though he is the one offended by our sin, he is the one who makes amends to himself through the death of Christ. God made the first move. God, God built the bridge. God mended the heart. And that is why our thesis in this text is God has reconciled believers to himself. This was God's act. That's what the gospel captures. God is moving to reconcile people to himself. And now God calls us to serve as his ambassadors, Christ's ambassadors, to proclaim to all the world the message of reconciliation. Well, this is the, this is the subject of Paul's amazing text. Uh, I'll just read 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21 now. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this, all of it, is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Well, this text 
uh, as all of them, we'll look at the facts and we'll, we'll try to interpret those briefly. We'll look at any implications that this text may have on the gospel, and then we'll talk about how we can actualize this, make it our own. To begin with, what do you see? What are the basic things? Well, there are three things that I see in this text. First, Paul talks about a new mind. We no longer judge others on appearances alone, on externals. He said, there was a time when I treated Jesus of Nazareth on the, on the basis of what I, what I thought, but not anymore. He, is, he now knows who Christ is. He knows that Jesus of Nazareth was not simply an itinerant Jewish preacher, a, a carpenter turned rabbi. He is the Lord of all. And quite literally, if anyone, even us too now, if we're in Christ, then, then, then we're brand new creatures. The old has passed away and the new has come. He says we've been given, therefore, a new message. We have been reconciled with the ministry of, uh, of reconciliation by God. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And we have been reconciled with, with that ministry of God. And now he's entrusted to us the very ministry of reconciliation that we ourselves are reconciled with. It's a very powerful thing. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. He actually applied that reconciliation with us. He ended the breach. He crossed the crevasse. He made this right. And now those who have been healed in our relationship with God, he's entrusted to us with a ministry of reconciliation. And that means, of course, then we have a new ministry, a new mind, a new message, and a new ministry. We are ambassadors of Christ, and God at this very moment is making his appeal to everyone through us because Christ, who knew no sin, was made to be sin for us. And now, because he has taken everything that, that we deserved, he has given to us everything that he was. And now we have been, we have been pronounced, declared righteous in him. A new mind, a new message, and a new ministry. Guys, this, this, this message of reconciliation is at the very core of what it means to be a messenger of God. Look at what Malachi 2, 7 says about the lips of a priest. They should guard knowledge and people should seek instruction from his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Paul could talk about himself as an ambassador in chains at the end of Ephesians 6. He says, and also for me, pray for me. Pray for all the saints and pray for me too, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. So, so what do these three, the new mind, the new message to do ministry means? It means that we have the privilege in the gospel to speak in God's stead as his ambassadors. That, that in order that everyone now can be reconciled to God through Christ. Guys, because we've experienced this healing, this forgiveness, this reconciliation, he's entrusted to us the very ministry now to go and to tell people about this, 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 this love, this forgiveness, this kindness. We get to speak, as it were, in God's very place as his ambassadors, that everyone should be reconciled to God now through Christ. And the implications of this are threefold and clear. Through Christ, we've been reconciled to God through Jesus. We've been made into a new creation. We have been granted the very message of God's reconciliation in Christ. Not only have we been reconciled, but we've been given the message of reconciliation. And now, as God's ambassadors, we are to implore 
implore all people to be reconciled to God. It's our, it's our privilege now to go and to tell people that now in Christ, God is forgiving everyone. He's building the bridge. He's making up the gap. Everyone now can be reconciled in peace to God now, regardless of what they've done, regardless of who they are. God is more than willing to bring them back, to restore relationship and to be reconciled to them. So how do we make this our own? Guys, we have to, we have to recognize the unbelievable privilege we have to proclaim deliverance and release. And we should do this to our friends and our, our, our family, our, our neighbors, our associates. We should say what Paul said as ambassadors. We should say that through Jesus Christ, you can now be reconciled to God. I think of Paul's calling mentioned in Acts 26. But rise and stand on your feet, for I've appeared to you for this purpose. This is Paul's recounting of his own coming to Christ. Christ said, I've rise and stand on your feet. I've appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you as a servant and witness to the things in which you have seen in me and to those in which I will appear to you, delivering you from your people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins in a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. In the same way Paul was called to be God's messenger to announce forgiveness and healing, dear friend, so are you. If you're a Christian, you've been given this right because it is, it is good. Paul tells Timothy, and pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. One commentary to put it this way, the immediate representative of God's message of reconciliation was Paul, whose ministry is shared by everyone who is in Christ. All believers should serve Christ as his ambassadors. Paul's appeal was not a perfunctory pronouncement, but an impassioned plea. We try to persuade men addressed to the world on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Dear friends, it's a pretty extraordinary thing to be reconciled as a believer to God himself. And now to recognize that you've been called to serve as Christ's ambassador that we get to tell the entire world that God is no longer mad at us, that he is willing to forgive us, that, that, that this text, this verse at the end of this, for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, that we in him might become the very righteousness of God. I love the way Stanley Harawas, one great ethicist, put it, he said, the, the fact that we as Christians have something to say is not a personal achievement. It's not something you have to work at. I have something to say because I am a Christian. If you're saved, friends, you got something to say. And you should say it to everyone you know, because God was kind enough to build the bridge. He literally trans he 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 set he 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 built the bridge we can go over now we can relate to our father because god actually made it possible for us to have a relationship with god my prayer is that each one of us would recognize that we've been reconciled and that we would accept our role as ambassadors of this message of healing and forgiveness Amen.